Right. So I assume we started, right? <clears throat> okay, just now when I said thanks, brother. Well, let me just say if everybody didn't hear, Robert shared something really good, and if you didn't get it, well, you know where you're probably going to end up. <laughs> Okay, um, <clears throat> speaking of, of what Robert just shared, uh, let me read this. <clears throat> the solid form of incense was needed, but it was the incense that burned that was most important to God. Incense was never presented to God except in burning form. Never presented to God except in burning form. Now, there's a reason for that. Because that, just like the table of showbread and just like the candlestick, and we'll, we'll see that here, all represented offering or sacrifice. And we already some time back talked about the importance of sacrifice to God, that God is a God of sacrifice. Uh, I didn't say that God is a sacrificing God. That's the fruit of being a God of sacrifice sacrificing um, but what I meant was that this is something that is a part of the being of God and to know God you have to know him in, in these areas the the biggest way of course the, the the pinnacle of all of it the cross but we usually only know him in relationship to our salvation, in relationship to our healing, in relationship to our blessing. In other words, on temporal levels, on a temporal planet, based on our temporal either needs or wants. That's not knowing God. You see what I'm saying? It's not knowing God. We say, well, I know he's nice. Uh, <laughs> you know, well, I don't know that I should get into that right now, not that it's wrong or anything, just that um, there, is a, there is a wide chasm difference between God who is love and God who acts kindly. But see, our definition of love is that's where the problem lies. So it's hard to differentiate between those. <clears throat> All right. So the place of the solid form of incense was that it was constantly being consumed, poured out, and offered up. It is clear that the incense was a figure of sacrifice because it was offered on an altar. You know, that was just as much an altar as the brazen altar, the altar of incense was. Just as much an altar and just as much a sacrifice and an offering and just as much going up to God. In fact, let's say, um, like the solid incense itself, Jesus' life as a man was merely the sweetness of the unburned incense. Jesus becoming man and blessing us, meaning that. Okay, so... Jesus of Nazareth walking around and doing so many wonderful things speaks more to the ingredients put into the solid form of incense rather than the new form incense takes. It's still incense, it's just a different form. It's no longer solid. It's, um, what's, what's the right word? It's air. It's, um, you know, it becomes smelled instead of held. This guy's good. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, and, um, and it rises. See, the solid incense does not rise because there is no resurrection for that which has not died. Does that make sense? But burned incense changes forms and that form is the form that pleases 
God, there's like, this is, this is what I want to want as a fragrance. This is what pleases me. This is what brings about my good pleasure. You ever read in Ephesians where it talks about, this was all done for the good pleasure of the Father or good pleasure of God. Um, so we go, well, you know, good, God's happy, you know, but we don't, we don't understand what it is that made him happy. We could stick solid incense in his face and say, I know you're going to be happy with this because you ordered it to be made this way. And he would say, until it's burned, it haven't, you haven't done what I desire. You haven't, you haven't fulfilled my good pleasure. You've been an obedient, dutiful servant or person. But where is that which pleases me? Okay, so, so what are we talking about? We're talking about Christ crucified. But ultimately, we're talking about Christ crucified, that being that we call Christ crucified functioning in us, um, giving himself. Um, we talk about giving the Father the Son. We talk about giving the Father Christ crucified. But in truth, only the solid form of him in us, if I can put it this way, can give himself without being upset <laughs> or feeling the loss or, you know what I mean? Now, I don't know if that's the way I just said that's the most perfect way or not, but it, I think maybe it communicates something, even if the stuff isn't just exactly right. Um, it communicates something of... Um, of our tenor toward the life that is within us. And that tenor is not, okay, well, I'm going to give the Father the Son, so um, I'm going to sort of give myself. Okay, but there is no true giving without Christ. Every form of giving. And, you know, before Jesus came to the earth, people gave all the time. You know, people gave money and people gave neighbors help and people gave uh, gifts to their kids and people gave and, you know, they're all kind of given, but none of it was Christ. And even in Israel, with all that they did that involved lambs and stuff, and they gave a lamb, none of it was Christ because it wasn't Christ in them. The only true, true, pure lamb that anyone ever offered was the high priest and it just happened to be Christ also <laughs> the spirit and I've got all that down here so that we can get into that because that's a great great subject area um, so uh, um, but there are realizations that have, have to happen before a person can get there thank God for Romans 7 isn't it interesting that Romans 7 comes after Romans 6 when it has taught us that we're crucified, the old man is crucified? After. Because just knowing that information isn't enough. You know, there has to be the reality, the living reality of that worked in us. Oh, wretched man that I am, you have to come to a place that I am not it. I'm not the priest. I'm not the high priest. I'm not the, uh, I'm not the offerer. I'm not the offering. I'm not the, you know, I in myself, there is no good thing in me. Isn't that what he said in Romans 7? In myself, there's no good thing. Now, okay, so let's just take a little poll. How many of us are totally convinced that in you there's no good thing? Nothing, absolutely no good in you anywhere. Okay. All right. Y'all are deceived. I need to work on you a little bit. Because there are areas that we all still think that are acceptable to God, and I didn't mean that in a bad way. I, you know, here, y'all take over. I'm, I, mess up, I mess up all the time. You know, um, but there is, I mean, uh, my life, and that's not a good example for anything, but my life is a constant realization of both um, 
areas that I thought were, were doing pretty good and it wasn't Christ and the reality of Christ as the answer. So I don't get as discouraged as some people <laughs> because it's always the same. He shows me what's not Jesus, then he shows me Jesus, you know what I mean? I mean, I, I don't go through stuff like people go through because it's like, I've been, I've been doing this long enough <laughs> that I know that he loves me in the sense that he wants his son more than I want him in me and he will work with me to bring me to my realization that I'm not it and bring me to the real, realization that Christ is it and it's ever increasing faith in me that knows this is his way, this is his heart, this is what's gonna happen. I'm not, I don't have to be afraid of my failures or of my God, you know? And I mean, I think of this church from the start and I've probably failed greater than all of you put together, okay? Than all of you put together. But I've, maybe I have learned Jesus in a special way too. Maybe I have learned that my failures, all they've done is convince me of me and convince me of Christ. You know? You know, it says when the Holy Spirit comes, he will convince you of sin and of righteousness. <laughs> Yay! You know? So I get in that place. I mean, I remember I used to, in fear and trembling, just shake because I go, oh, what? I failed you, you know, how horrible, and I don't want to fail you. And he goes, you know, back then he'd go, you know, stop your whining. You know, you are a failure. You didn't fail me. You are a failure. You know? <laughs> but then he shows you Christ. But then he shows you Christ, you know? And in those early days, of course, you don't know that that's a process, and you don't know that that's a beautiful thing because eventually... You know, you're rising in that incense, but you're not. It's you're rising with Christ because we were, we did not rise. We rose in him. So when that incense rises, somehow, whatever, but I know that I'm not the fragrance. <laughs> and that's, a, that's not a bad thing, you know. It, I'll tell you what, it's only bad if we never go on either to see Jesus or we see Jesus and we never make that the living Christ in us, the living God. David always talked about the living God. Isn't that great? I mean, do you, do you see the power of his relationship? You know, his was he wanted a living God, and I want a living God living in me. And now I'm learning by the Holy Spirit what his tenor, what his nature is like, what, what you know, you know, they say, what would Jesus do? I'm learning what Jesus would do, but the difference is I ain't trying to do it. You know, what would Jesus do? Well, if I knew it, I would, probably wouldn't do it anyway. <laughs> you know? I'd try and fail, you know. But the, the, the beauty of that is that I, as I'm learning that, I'm also adding my prayers and my heart and as much as I know how my walk and even telling him regularly I don't even know how short I am, and even in this that you're showing me now, so I ask you to take me beyond what I know because I, I'll stop or I'll think I know something, and I'm, while I'm walking contrary to his nature right now at the height of what you're doing, so please, please, please take me beyond this and don't allow me to to make this another teaching that I try to communicate to people instead of, oh, I need to communicate to you, hardhead, Randy, <laughs> you know? You're the one that needs Jesus. You say, well, you know, you hadn't been so bad lately. Well, if I was perfect, it wouldn't matter one bit. If I was perfect, it would make no difference at all. I want Jesus, and I don't want my heart to, to, to rest in teaching or rest in a place or rest in a movement in a place. I want it to rest only, only in Jesus, only 
Jesus. And that's not a religious prayer I'm, or a religious statement I'm making as a minister. That's as an individual that simply wants the Lord at whatever cost, at whatever loss, at whatever, I, you know, all of that doesn't scare me because that's his path. You know, that's the way of the cross. You know, we talk about that. The way of the cross, that's the way of the cross. So, you know, but see, while others are afraid of loss, while others are afraid of, of being looked down on, while others are afraid of, of um, being seen for something that, you know, would make them look really bad or whatever, I see that as, and here's the difference, I would be afraid of that too if I didn't see what I'm beginning to see. <laughs> I'd be afraid of that. But I'm not afraid of it at all. I'm not afraid of, you know, I, oh, God, I, can't, I can't just keep telling you the stuff going off in me all the time, but I, I'm not afraid of it. I am not. I am not. I, I'll tell you what. Because I want the Lord in this way, it's like this is his way. I just want to be with you, you know? Hinds feet on high places or whatever. <laughs> it's like, you know, somebody says, well, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And, you know, in the old days, I'd say, quit following me and get up here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> get up here and do some stuff, goodness and mercy. Now I think whatever, you know, that's going to be whatever, you know. I don't, I'm not looking back. Do you, you know what I'm saying? I'm not looking back, you know. I'm looking ahead. I'm pressing toward the mark of the high calling, the prize of the, that's in Christ. I'm looking for gold that I have never seen before. And I don't know. I don't know it. And I want to be transformed by it. I want to be transformed by it. And, I, and here's my deal. I ain't going to stop until I'm transformed by it. There's got to, you know, do you believe in the word transformation? Metamorphosis. Powerful reality. But how many Christians do you think? See, real, well, I don't, I, it's not important that we measure. I, I'm not going to stop until I'm convinced of transformation. Until I'm convinced of Christ in a way that, um, that I don't know the way <laughs> when I'm convinced. It's yet. You see, I have to press on. See, we all want to know all the, the, the things in the process. And I don't know it all, you know. Um, but I know that this is him as the way. I know that. I know it is. And so anyway, and besides, if I didn't know him that this is him as the, as the way, I know that there's something in my heart that the Lord has gotten a hold of and it is drawing me and it is not explained to my mind and it is not a teaching and it's not something I'm going to get. It is drawing me into whatever the eternal God wants to draw me into and he's not doesn't seem to be in a hurry, but it's steady. It's not, it's not fast, but it's steady, and I feel it constantly. It's that, it'd be like gravity pulling you down. It's like gra this gravity of the hand of God pulling me forever gently forward. And, and I, I tell him, I, I have no expectations of what this means. I don't, I'm not looking for you to do something in that way. I just want to stay with you in this process. And so keep on going. Lord, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus.
You see, because he's our life. But Lord Jesus, I'm in the hands of the Lord. And so I didn't read anything or hardly share anything. But I, I'm telling you, God is good, isn't he? I mean, there, he's, this is, and when I say good, I mean he is good to, he's just good, but in a real way. He's good, you know. You know, and other churches say, God is good, and everybody yells all the time. No, it doesn't feel good all the time. <laughs> but he's good in the real way. And, um, you know, my prayers and my heart, I'm, I'm wanting Jesus, but I'm never far from, from you. I'm never far from you. I'm closer, I'm further now, but I'm closer now to you than ever because I, I don't want to go without you. <laughs> I don't want to make this my little deal. You know what I mean? I don't want to go. So it's like, it's like, but see, that, see those arms stretched out like that? That's like the cross, but it's like gathering. It's like if he was, someone was pushing the cross forward, everything in front of it would be gathered up with it, you know what I mean? Like a bulldozer. And, uh, and I believe that God is doing something. I believe it is. And, and there, usually there, there is a shaking. There has to be a shaking. Amen? There has to be a shaking. But what it leads to is an awakening. And what the awakening leads to is to light, and what light leads to is life. And I believe, see, and I'll, I'm, I'm ending with this because it's over, but I, I, I don't believe anybody ever came to New Creation Fellowship, or not, that's not true of everybody, but I don't believe any of you ever came here that didn't want the real Jesus. So guess what? Fasten your seatbelts. Father, we just thank you for your love and for your, your kindnesses that are ever multiplied through Jesus Christ until the nature of love is manifested in our mortal flesh and we comprehend you as the length and the breadth and the height and the depth. We thank you. We thank you for the season we're in, but we thank you that our heart is that it not be a season, but a, a ongoing work that finally brings about and manifests the things why you raised up New Creation Fellowship in the first place. And all those who are joined with us on Skype and if held on to us as we've held on to them. That your life, Jesus, you, Jesus, Jesus, the very one we long after, love, and are, are satisfied with even while we are yet not satisfied. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit, for continuing to lead us and guide us. We love you, Father, for fathering us. In Jesus' name, amen. No more class. Bye.